The night sky has been a source of wonder for generations, but seeing it in detail is becoming ever harder. Artificial lights on Earth make seeing a truly dark sky difficult. That's why a national park in Australia has been declared the country's first dark park. So we've done a few things with the lighting. We've changed uh, some of the bulbs to the LEDs. Uh, we've put some shields on them. It's also um, educating visitors when they come to camp about light pollution and how we can reduce that during their stay. The initiative has been driven by the park's neighbour, the Siding Springs Observatory. Because uh, of the dark skies of the observatory, because of the fact that the observatory skies are protected by legislation, it made the Warrumbungle National Park a fairly obvious candidate to be recognised internationally as a dark sky park. Even in remote locations like this, far from urban centres, light pollution can be a problem. In cities, there's no chance of truly dark skies. This is the Sydney Observatory, built in 1858. These days, though, it's far from ideal for stargazing because of the bright light, the city that now surrounds it. And too much light at night, both outside and on screens inside people's homes, is bad for people's sleep and health too. Things like depression, neurological disorders, ageing, but also for metabolic issues, obesity, cardiovascular disease. Light is much more important than we've previously given it credit for. A dark place also works as a reminder to stop and occasionally look up. So that people don't just come to see the geology and the flora and the fauna and relax in these wonderful surroundings. They can also come to see the stars as our forebears saw them 40,000 years ago, the first people who watched the stars from this place. A view which has changed remarkably little since. Andrew Thomas, Al Jazeera.